Okay, so we're going to create our Django project on our local computer first. And the first thing we're going to do to get started with that is to create a virtual environment so that we can install all of our packages. Um, so to get started with that, let's open up Git Bash. And we'll use Control Plus just to make it a bit bigger for you to see. Um, and I think a good thing to do is just to get oriented as to where we are in the terminal, our current working directory. And we can look at that with PD wd or print working directory where on c drive it uses macd which is my username and um i don't want to create my project here because we have a look with ls it's in the folder it's a bunch of shit and um kind of clutters everything up so let's make a directory called code which we then see here we jump into code code and pop in else you'll see there's nothing in code and so it's i like to have code directory where i put all my projects and stuff so let's make another one inside of code called django toot or django deploy um and this is where we'll have our project so let's go into django deploy cd control l to clear the screen cool we're now ready to create our virtual environment um but before we get um do that it's just good to check what versions of Python you have on your computer, because it's kind of important. So you can do that using Python-V, Python version. And you can see I've got Python 3.2, um, which is good. And so pip v, uh, you'll see it's pip version 19 for Python 3.8. All good. So let's uh, search your length. I'm going to do pip install virtual and this is the tool that we're going to use to create our virtual environment it's already installed that's nice right and then we're going to create our virtual environment by doing virtual env dash dash python python env. so this first bit is just saying use the tool virtual env this command dash python python is saying use the python interpreter that corresponds to this command. So if we had different version of Python or Python 2 or Python 3, stuff like that, um, we can tell it to use this one, which in this case is Python 3, it's what we want. And env is just saying, put it all in a folder called env. So let's let that run. And this basically just goes and copies all the necessary stuff in our Python executable environment into this sort of mini environment. So it's like a mini installation of Python. There you go, you've got lib, some config file and scripts inside our environment. Um, there's a little weird thing you should know about. On Windows, all these scripts go in a folder called scripts. In Linux, it goes in a folder called bin. And yes, a uh, version of virtual has created the scripts folder. But you'll see later, there's also bin, um, which is kind of an, an annoying inconsistency. So let's have a look in env scripts. There's a whole bunch of stuff, um, but you can see that there are a bunch of scripts to activate and deactivate our virtual environment. You can see that there is pipe.exe, which we'll be using, um, and you can see that there's pip.exe. So a whole bunch of stuff has been in this folder. Um, so once again, let's have a little version of Python we're using, which Python which pip all right and so we're using python and pip that are in our c drive python 3.8 python but when we activate our virtual environment and we do that with um, dot and scripts activate um we will see this little env thing come up in our command prompt and if we do which python which pip you can see it's now pointing the Python executable in our environment scripts, which we just looked at. And the same with pip. So we're now using a different version of pip and Python than we were using before, um, which is a good thing because it means that all of our um, sort of, uh, installed packages will be separate to our global installation. So you have to activate to get out of the virtual environment. And you can see that the end thing has gone away. And if I do which Python now, it's gone back the old one um 
So you might be wondering what's going on when I type dot end bin oh, scripts, sorry, scripts active. Like a, this is a bit magical. And it's actually pretty straightforward. If we look inside the script, it's just a bash script. Um, so we're really just running a bash script that does a whole bunch of shit that we don't care about that is changing our um, Python executable in our shell. And this dot, all this is saying is run the script as if we are just copying and copying the code into our terminal so that all the settings uh, remain after the script is run. That's that. So we activate, deactivate is different uh, bash script, presumably, that sets things back to the way they were. All good, pretty straightforward. Um, and so the main difference when we run, uh, so when we activate our virtual environment, you can do a pip freeze, shows your Python packages that are installed. And I'll just show you using our sort of global pip. If we do a pip freeze, you can see I've got some stuff installed, including virtual end. Um, and if I activate my virtual end, and then do a pip freeze, you see there's nothing installed. Cool. So that's the big, I guess, draw of virtual environment. It gives you a clean slate to start with. And this is important when deploying apps because we want to have a clean slate when deploying as well and to make sure that our Python packages on our computer and our Python packages on the server are the same. Cool. Um, so now that we're in our virtual environment and it's created, let's install some stuff. So instead of just typing, whoop, sorry, instead of just typing pip install, say Django, we're going to use a file called requirements.txt. And I'll show you how to So I'm going to open this folder in code. Um, I recommend you use your code. It's a really nice editor. And I'll let you do this cool little trick with code dot, dot meaning this current directory. And open the in directory. Right. So under there in Studio Code, we've got lib scripts, all that crap. Um, right. So the first thing we're going to project is create a new file, call it requirements.txt, and we're going to whack Django in there. Um, and that's it. Now pip install. Install, we do pip install r for a requirements file, and we can use re tab, and it's going to look in the requirements.txt file and install everything in there. Now, because Django is going to go look for the latest version of Django, which is this time, and download that, Django is also going to tell. Um, in its setup.file, uh, it's like in the Django, I find all of these other packages to work. So we give Django in turn and has said, I need ASCII ref and PyTZ as class. Um, Pip has gone in and installed all of the Django needs to run as well. And it is taking its great time to spend a minute. Right, so one thing I want to talk about is this question of, of um, do we specify what Django want when we're writing our requirements of text? So see the syntax, um, Django equals, say, 3.0.5. When you call um, Django from the requirements of text, it will always stand in. And this is a good idea. But this is a good idea when you code like the same every time, and you have that reliability. Um, that's the downside of this. You need to um, manually upgrade your versions to stay up to date with the security patterns and features, which is sort of something you have to worry about, um, which maybe you don't want to handle. That's sort of a trade-off you need 
me take. Me being kind of lazy, I'm just going to do Django, but that's something to think about. Right, so it's all everything, and my um, project is ready to go. So if we pop a pit freeze now, we say Django, and Django's dependencies have been installed. And um, actually, a trick that you can do if you are interested in just freezing versions is to do pip freeze and then redirect the output into requirements.txt. If we do that, you'll see that we get a nice requirements.txt for has our um, dependencies. This means that when we deploy the server, the packages will be exactly the same. Once again, I don't really care, I'll just write Django again. But that is an option. Cool. Um, so to wrap up this video, um, I'm going to show you that we've got the Django admin executable now. Right. Now it is. And as you can see, it gives us a bunch of commands um, that allows us to do some Django stuff. And one thing to point out, if we use the command to tell us like where this came from, which Django admin means us, um, that it has installed in our virtual environment as well. So when we're in the virtual environment, we use pip to install things, even if executables and stuff, all that stuff goes in the virtual environment, which is nice because it means that um, they're the actual versions that we want. Cool. So that is it for our virtual environment. Our next step is we're going to set up our Django app.